Well, it is March 5th and I just got back from a week of vacation and between that and the few days of warm weather that we had, I am starting to get the itch. And I know that I've had a few questions from people about how I rig my jet ski and I'm hoping by posting this video that I'll get other people to post videos of what they do because part of the thing that makes this so interesting and unique to me is that everybody's different. There's no standard about what everybody's running. Um, I'll start with the basics about my ski and then go through some of the custom pieces that I have. To start with, I have a Sea-Doo 2006 Wake Edition. I purchased it uh, about 15 months ago. It is lightly used for how old it is and was only used in fresh water, uh, which is one of the things I was looking for. I bought it from my dad's neighbor up near Erie, Pennsylvania. They took pretty good care of it, had it winterized every year, um, and really no major things that I had to deal with when I bought it from them. Um, start with, you can see in front of me, I got some rod holders. I got this on each side of the ski. These were done by Nate Landis at East Coast X down near the Lewis boat ramp. He did this, he also did my mount here for my fish finder and my GPS. I have it wired up through here, I'll show you that in a minute. Going around, you can see that fish finder comes out through the bottom. You can see my trickle charger there on for the winter. And you can see the transducer mounts right here. I have a kind of a custom shaped aluminum bracket so it goes underneath the step. I didn't have to drill extra holes. And it just folds down into place and folds right back up. I have the wire running through here, siliconed in, and goes into the ski. We'll go into the inside in a minute. Uh, the Wake Edition comes with these handles. I don't really use them much. Uh, occasionally, I'll hang a backpack off of it. And then coming around through, you see these on the other side. He also did this custom box for me, which is extremely nice. It has an onboard radio, and then I have my bilge here. Still working. So. I also, initially I did only have this here. I did not have an external antenna, but you know, my range was very limited with that. Thus I decided to put this antenna on uh, late last year and it just kind of brackets up and then rides up right about like that. Opening the front hatch to my ski, I have my dry box pulled out. We'll take a look at some of the wiring. You can see I have a second battery in here. And I'm still debating if I can do this better. I have a rubber mat underneath here, which wedges it into place and keeps it from rattling. And I have it locked down with a bungee cord. Um, you can see the wiring goes from here, up internally, and around up to the radio. And also my transducer wires. I decided to do it this way. I had to make an extra port with waterproof plug for them to come through rather than have them come up through here because they'd be in and up in front of me every time I open the hatch. I initially used a battery somewhat similar to this. I tried to go down to the starter battery that you'll see, you know, is basically like an ATV um, small um, machine battery. But even with the automatic charging relay that I have installed, I, I managed to drain it and kill it. So I had to go back to a deep cycle marine battery. The things I have wired onto here include my onboard radio, my fish finder GPS combination, and my bilge. The wiring goes back up through here, and I'll show you the main compartment in a second, and like I said, it goes back up into here. Um, definitely use tinned marine wire. I think I ran out of tinned wire the first time I did my onboard radio, started to have some issues. Clearly, uh, the tinned wire is important because you, despite your best efforts, you're going to get some water and some corrosion in here, and you need to do your best to make sure that that thing's going to be very reliable. Uh, you can see my fire extinguisher here. I know every ski keeps those in a different location. Okay, going into my main hatch, you can see I have my charger on there. There's my starter battery, and somewhat difficult to see, but right underneath the airflow intake is my automatic charging relay. I decided to put that on so that I'm able to charge my secondary battery, um, you know, with the fish fire constantly running or with your onboard radio constantly on. There became the concern that I could potentially uh, kill the second battery and then be stuck which would not be something I'd want to run into. Now, as a secondary device, I'll go into my ditch bag uh, and discuss some of those things so that I'm not left high and dry. Uh, the wiring for the bilge comes back through underneath here. I take out this tray where I keep some weights and some other fishing stuff, and you can see the transducer coming up and through here. And 
you can see some of my wiring going in through here. And down in there you can see my bilge. Uh, I did learn that I had to pipe the outflow there because I had some water backflowing into the ski at one point last year. So I had to route that up and around, which is why you see it is so particularly long with the pipe. Uh, that's to prevent any backflow. And then you can see my transducer wire comes up and through here. And all these are zip tied along the course of the ski. Getting into my dry box, I have some fishing things kind of left over from last year. I'm gonna need to have to go through here. Kind of organize pretty soon, reload, uh, swim baits, uh, these were my striper gear, didn't really get to use that much with how poor this past year's striper fishing was, and then you can see in here I have a couple different dry bags, uh, I have a dry bag in here, some for documents, some for rain gear, and then my ditch bag, uh, my ditch bag contains an extra set of marine flares, it also contains several bottles of water, uh, I have the secondary marine kit here that's more easily accessible for marine distress signals. Um, several other things will go in here over the course of the year as well. And some sunscreen and other necessities like plastic bags and garbage bags to help keep things dry. Initially in my ditch bag, but now more properly is usually in here a second handheld radio where it is located on my life jacket. I can show you that in a second. Uh, that also contains a locator beacon. So digging into my safety gear a little bit more. Inside my document pouch, I have my licensing, fishing license, all that good stuff. Um, extra fuses, some marine repair equipment on board just in case necessary. Back down in here, get some spare tools, if they're needed, socket for the battery screwdriver. Um, spare hooks, and things, an extra rope in the bottom there. Inside here, I have my secondary marine. Uh, four bottles of water, a fixed blade knife, and an emergency blanket. Uh, looking at my life jacket, flyers here, a whistle, audible distress, and my ACR. I originally got this for a backpacking trip to Colorado where I was elk hunting, but you know, I had the foresight to get something that was waterproof and it works perfectly for marine safety as well. And it's not a spot, so it's not GPS dependent. Um, supposedly, I haven't owned one, but supposedly those things uh, can kind of have blank spots where you won't get service. That's not something you want, so this is Radio Link, my secondary radio here, which sometimes I'll keep strapped here. Sometimes I'll keep in that front compartment there. My fish finder nav system is the Raymarine Dragonfly 5. It uh, has been pretty good. I did run into an issue out of the box, but Raymarine was pretty good about replacing it. And the plugs are just wired through here. Moving back, I just kind of put my rack on here to show you what I'm using. Uh, a couple Rotopax racks for fuel. Unfortunately, you can kind of already see they're kind of corroded, so I don't know if I'm going to have to replace these each year or what. Uh, probably be best. I always keep a fish bag in here. Some a couple of people would ask me, like, what are you going to do if you get a really big fish? I actually have two fish bags on here. I have a second one that I keep up in the front compartment. Um, came in handy last year for chunking. I had the one and then when I got some fish in I used the second bag to keep the fish in and then I uh, had this as well. Keep a throwable ratchet uh, kind of bungeed underneath here. Uh, the different rod holders you can see. I have my leaders kind of bungeed on here. Uh, regular mono and then fluorocarbon here. And I'm just using a regular cheapo um, red and white Coleman cooler. I'm still debating with myself. I'm interested in what other people are doing is where's the best pace to kind of keep ice if I'm taking it or storage or put fish. I still don't know quite what I want to do and I've kind of experimented between keeping my lures and tackle in the front, keeping them in the cooler in the back, or keeping them in a backpack on the side. So curious as to what everybody else is doing because I don't know what the best way to do that is yet. Um, I don't know. So that's kind of what I'm doing with my jet ski. I'm curious what everybody else is doing with theirs. And I'm really looking forward to catching some big fish this summer.